Hello, welcome to today's episode of Juicing the Numbers. I am your host, Joshua Tracy. And I'm Corbin Heller. And today, uh, we're going to do a little bit of everything, uh, not quite an around the horn as we have specified topics, but not our usual stats episode, as we just felt as though we had too much to discuss, given um, the predictions we didn't get to update on in the Monday episode, as well as some things that are happening down in Houston, which we cannot seem to avoid talking about for more than three weeks. So Ugh. we'll be doing a little bit more on that. Um, but in the meantime, uh, do you want? Should we start? I feel like we should start with our predictions. Yeah, we should do that. Okay. So, you, you never know what news is going to break in the next hour. That's going to cause us to have to, you know, <laughs> add something to this. Oh, there's always something, my friend. Especially uh, with us. Oh, there's always something. So let's start. As, as you may recall, we did this with the MLB. We do this with the NFL. At the beginning of the season, we made uh, NFL awards predictions and then 10 bold predictions. And so we will be giving updates on where those things stand as of right now. Corwin, shall we start with the awards? Uh, yeah, let's talk about awards. Why not? All right. So I, what, what's, what's your first category? I think we let you lead this since. Uh, Ooh, I have MVP. Okay. Uh, who did you have as your MVP? Um, so I think I split it up where I had like the candidate from the AFC and the candidate from the NFC and then just picked one. So I predicted Pat Mahomes and Jared Goff with Pat Mahomes taking the MVP. Um, he still can. I don't think he's the front runner right now, but at least we know that Jared Goff is most definitely not going to win the sword. Yeah, yeah, and I would really question Pat Mahomes just because of the time that he's missed at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, not to say he's totally fucking out of it, but just Lamar Jackson having that season. Especially uh, with Russell Wilson, too, in the NFC. Oh, like Those are shit. two guys that are huge, uh, having huge seasons, I should say. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Sorry, Pat, but uh, not your year. Although, you know... Still plenty of football left to be played. Pat Mahomes, never a bad guess. But no. we'll call this one doubtful. Yes. Which uh, brings us to mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had Philip Rivers. And we did talk Yikes. earlier this week about how Rivers isn't having a bad season, despite no. what it looks like via kind of just eyeballing it. Um, outside of those five fumbles, that's still atrocious. But he is far and away, uh, or sorry, far and removed from the MVP conversation thus far. Yeah, I don't really think he's in a position to be able to come back and take it either. What should we call below? Like, what's a step below doubtful? Uh, uh, disqual I mean, I technically, there out? isn't. It's just out. <laughs> yeah. He's on IR. <laughs> this is an IR choice for me it's a it, it, it's physically unable to participate it's on the pup list <laughs> all right you want to move on to offensive player of the year uh yes lay it on me so i had saquon barkley here um uh, pat mahomes was listed as my afc guy uh saquon's not gonna win it uh he's dealt with too many injuries this year um when he's been on the field he's been great but there you know there have been guys who have outperformed him <laughs> Uh, if we kind of agree that the offensive player of the year is basically going to go to the non-quarterback MVP, I think this is coming down to guys like Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, uh, maybe a Michael Thomas type guy. Um, but uh, I think Saquon's out of this conversation too. Uh, I think it's basically the same exact story for my guy, Alvin Kamara. Uh, these are basically the same dudes in a lot of ways. Great seasons, but missed time. Uh, great, but not up to the level. I think Christian McCaffrey is probably the real choice at this point in the season. I don't know how you don't give it to him. I'd agree uh, with that, yeah. We could honestly, if we were uh, feeling bold, we could include him in our MVP discussion just from how ridiculous his season has been up to this point, uh, oh, although sure. a lower level possibly than Wilson and Jackson. But yeah, you know, oh well, tough. Uh, I actually want to look up the offensive player of the year odds right now because that is actually uh oh come on 
Uh, while you're doing that, I'm assuming next you're going to do Defensive Player of the Year. For that, yes. I have Jamal Adams of the Jets, who has had a fine season. Um, I'm a Jets fan, so I've obviously watched all of his games. I wouldn't be so bold to say he... I mean, I didn't think in, in any reality he was actually going to win this award, but I was trying to be bold and be a bit of a homer with the choice. I, I definitely wouldn't say Jamal is having a bad season. I wouldn't even say he's having a subpar season. He's having a good season, but I don't think yeah. he's having defensive player of the year season. So I, I'd agree with that. Like, yeah. not even on the fringe. Um, yeah, for some reason, I can find defensive player of the year odds i just can't find offensive player of the year so whatever i had miles garrett here um which out of all of the picks that we've had so far i think he is the closest to being uh you know in the conversation of any of these guys um it's a bit of an open race right now in my mind um guys like stefan gilmore and nick bosa aaron donald are all kind of leading the pack but i think miles garrett's right up there um so yeah we'll see he's currently fifth in total odds with a plus 1200 behind nick bosa aaron donald joey bosa and stefan gilmore so there's that i did just pull up jamal adams stats because i was curious and uh this year compared to last year he is actually uh you know he's improving Again, I don't think he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year, but uh, he has a marginally lower completion percentage. Last year it was 55. This year it's 54.2, so not huge. Uh, fewer yards per completion. Last year, 12.3. This year, 9.1. Thus, for, um, also going to be fewer yards per target, 6.8 versus 4.9. He has uh, a slightly higher QB rating allowed this year, 74.7 last year, 78.1 this year. Average up the target is down. Uh, I don't want to use the raw stat, the counting stats, because last year was 16 games. This year, it's only been nine. And I don't feel like doing the math, mm -hmm. but uh, he already last year had 3.5 sacks. This year, he already has three. So strong chance he'll pass that mark. Uh, missed tackle percent way down 9.4 last year, 5.5 percent this year. And he uh, has two touchdowns this year, which is yeah. pretty cool. He had a hell of a game this week. Fuck. Yeah. He, uh, it, week 10, it was week nine. Yeah, week 10. He, in, in, in one single play, he had a sack, a force fumble, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown in one play. Yeah, that's uh, that's usually pretty good for the stat sheet. Yeah, he was also named uh, NFL Defensive Player of the Week, <laughs> although that's not what I chose him for. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, wh which category do we have next? Uh, offensive and Defensive Rookie of the Year. Okay. Um, offensive, I had David Montgomery. Who with the is he the Packers? He's the Bears running back. Bears, damn it! All right, yeah, things aren't looking good for him. Uh, I think he's definitely on the outside looking in, and there's not much he's going to be able to do to uh, make a comeback here. Currently, fifteenth out of all rush running backs in rushing yards thus far. Or no, that's attempts. Yeah. My bad. Um, where what's his name again? <laughs> I already uh, forgot. David Montgomery. Ah, uh, nineteenth out of all running backs in yeah, yards. Yeah, not ideal. Not ideal. Yeah, it's not, but you know. Oh well. Who do you got? I have Josh Jacobs. Much better choice. Yeah, who's having a nice fucking year. I think I chose him just because he was the first running back I saw uh, when I looked at who got drafted this year. Right. Um, thus far, he has the seventh most running rushing yards in the NFL with 811. He has seven touchdowns, 4.8 yards per attempt, 90.1 yards per game, no fumbles. Uh, I actually might get this. I Yeah, I think he's the front runner right now. I think yeah. it's uh, his to lose at this point, unless Kyler Murray can really ball out the second half of the year. But I think it's Josh Jacobs to lose. I, I Wow, I'm just so genuinely surprised that I might actually get one of these right because I didn't <laughs> take this very seriously. Uh, all right, who do you got for defensive player of the year? Defensive rookie of the year? Uh, I went incredibly biased and went Devin Bush, uh, which honestly, I would put him top two or three right now, um, especially with how his role has, or how the Steelers defense has transformed with him taking a bigger role. Um, I think Nick Bosa is still the front runner uh, just because he's been so dominant. 
off the edge. But uh, I think Devin Bush uh, has a shot at this. I picked Quentin Williams, which was uh, not... I thought it'd be a better pick than it was. I didn't think he'd necessarily you know, finish anywhere near the top three, but I, I don't think he's going to finish uh, near the top five for this award. He's just been so quiet, and he's been kind of hurt, and his stats is just so massively unimpressive. Um, it's, it's it's hard to win the award when you're not on a successful team, you know? Yeah, that and he plays a much quieter position. Like, Nick Bosa's position is way flashier. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, he's also playing it super fucking well. But it, it's also a flashier position, which makes it more easily for you to be noticed and your stats to matter. So, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely going to chalk this up as a as a as a as a pup uh, as a, as a pup list for me. <laughs> um, All right. Next up, we have coach of the year. Okay. Is um, there not a rookie of the? I have rookie of the year. Is it not? Is that not a thing? I think it. It is I think a thing. We right? talked about it. I don't remember. It, it no, it definitely is because that we talk and this is the example we use because Dak Prescott won r- rookie of the year the same year that Ezekiel Elliott won offensive rookie of the year and we were both like that's dumb. Got it. Um, I don't remember who I chose for this then. I don't remember. Uh, I have Daniel Jones. Um, interesting. I, I yeah, I don't remember making the pick. Uh, I obviously did because I have it written down. Uh, let's let's look at Daniel Jones's stats just for just for fun. Um, what I don't think he's been he hasn't been he's been turning the ball over a lot, but he's not been bad. I don't think he's been awful. I actually have his stats up right here. Uh, sixty three percent completion percent, nineteen hundred eighty four yards, fifteen touchdowns to eight interceptions, uh, six point seven yards per attempt. Uh. Wow, he has 247 yards lost due to sacks, the highest in the NFL. That's really bad. Wow, he's been sacked 32 times. That's nuts. Uh, 88 QB rating. Um, he has he has a, he's at a 16.8 bad throw percent. That's pretty high. He uh he has a lot of fumbles. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm trying to find him. Um, under 2019 uh, games. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot. He's had it's the most in the NFL. In his past three games, he has fucking seven fumbles. Seven fumbles in three games. That's oh, insane. No. Oh, buddy. That's not what you want. Oh God. Only two games where he started that he didn't throw an interception. Three games that he didn't have a fumble in. This is he's had some bright moments, but overall, this is not a great year for Daniel Jones. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a, a mixed bag. You know, his his actual passing passing looks to be fine, but he's getting hit a fuck ton. He's losing yards when he does it, and he's giving up the ball when he does it. Um, and he's a little bit erratic. He's not going to win Rookie of the Year by any stretch, uh, but he's not terrible. He's better than no, I thought. He's, he's not the worst rookie quarterback. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's fair. We can we can leave it at that. <laughs> uh, do you want to do who we think is going to end up winning these awards before we like? Do you want to do a prediction for we think who we think the rookie of the year is going to be? Uh, like sure. Overall? Who do you think? Who do you think the overall rookie of the year is going to be? Um, I'd go with Josh Jacobs. Uh, actually, no, I take it back. I think it's going to be Nick Bosa. Hmm. I wanted I, I wanted to go offense because it's flashy, but I just think Nick Bosa's better. I I I I genuinely don't know. I'm also really bad at keeping track of who rookies are in the NFL in a given year. So here are the so overall rookie of the years have been given out I guess since two thousand two. The last defensive player to win the award was Nadamikan Sue in twenty ten. He's actually the only defensive player to win the award. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess I would say Nick Bosa too, because there's not too many 
I think the most impressive offensive rookies thus far this season has been Josh Jacobs, and I'm just not sure he's going to be enough to take it, you know, over yeah, how, know, over just how dominant Bose has been. So you're probably right. Um, yeah, I'm not sure there's any more point in looking. I'm looking at rookies right now, but no one no worth it. Shall we move to coach of the year? Yes. Who do you got? I have Mike Zimmer of the Vikings. Um, I don't want to say it's a bad pick because they've kind of dipped, but then they were able to come back. They've been playing well. They have a good team all around, but I just don't think he's actually the front runner in this right now. I picked Adam Gase, and we can just move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is a, this is a Kyle Shanahan, Bill Belichick award this year. I I would guess Kyle Shanahan if I had to, just because the Patriots are always good, so you're going to get some bias with that, and the Niners are not usually good, so you know, I that had, kind of deal. I had Mike Tomlin here for the AFC, and if the Steelers can pull out a uh, playoff spot and or win the division, however it works out, I think uh, I think he has a very, very good chance of winning it. Uh, so I have a comeback player of the year uh, category. What other ones do you have? That's the only other one I have. Uh, on that's the only list. other one I have as well. All right, who do you have? Uh, for the AFC, I had Earl Thomas. For the NFC, I had Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, I don't remember if there's a singular comeback player of the year. Or if I believe it's... it is a singular one. I also have Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, I had highlighted Earl Thomas as my individual pick, so I'll go with him. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I remember you saying Earl Thomas because I think I went first and you said shit, or no, or you went, f- you only said one of them, and then you got upset when I said Jimmy Garoppolo as well because you were like, oh, I had him. <laughs> uh, I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, I honestly don't know. I mean, Jimmy hasn't necessarily played tremendous this year. He's been good, no doubt about it, and he's led his team to an eight and one record. But I just don't know if it's outperforming Earl Thomas right now. Honestly, I can't really say to the extent in which he's performed this year. I just haven't been watching him too carefully. So, Honestly, yeah, but he's also know. he's also super dreamy. Don't forget about that part. It's true. He is very attractive as a man. Aaron Andrews uh, can confirm. I I think he'll probably st- I I would still favor him over Earl Thomas, despite the fact Earl Thomas is probably having stats wise a better season, just because. He plays quarterback and his team's doing super well and, you know, all those usual bias type things. Hmm. In terms of his actual stats, currently he has a 67.6% completion percent. He has uh, 14 touchdowns on eight interceptions, which I think is also Daniel Jones's numbers just about. Um, <laughs> he's averaging 7.6 yards per attempt. He has a 94.8 QB rating, 17 sacks for uh, 102 yards lost his qbr i guess is calculated at the end of the season um he has a 2054 total yards yeah 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 uh 14.3 percent bat throw percent yeah that's all i've got i have the bavada odds for uh, who's going to win the nfl comeback player of the year award in 2019 Jimmy Garoppolo is second with plus 180. Uh, I'll give you two guesses, or I'll give you three guesses. It's a nice round number. At who is number one? And it's no one we've said. Colin Kaepernick. It is It is not Colin Kaepernick, although that would be fantastic. He's having a workout soon for NFL yeah. teams. I um, don't think it'll lead to anything, but it's awesome. Who the fuck else got hurt last year? I, I don't know. It's a name that it's kind of like, okay, sure, but it's not like, oh, he was out for all of last season. It's a, still a big name, though. Aaron Rodgers? Uh, Aaron Rodgers is sixth with plus 2,000 odds. I guess tied for fifth. Oh, uh, I don't know. Who is it? Cooper Cup with plus 155. Really? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's a uh, Cooper right. Cup, Jimmy Garoppolo, or I'm sorry, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Dalvin Cook, Travis Frederick, and then a f- uh, bunch of guys are tied: uh, Jacoby Brissett, Aaron Rodgers, Emmanuel Sanders, and uh, Darren Waller. 
You know, I forgot Dalvin Cook missed a lot of last year. He actually has a pretty decent claim to this. I did too, and if I had to pick now, I would say it's going to end up being Dalvin Cook. Yeah, that'll be a really interesting because I. But we also know how much awards people like to, you know, set. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they like to parse out the awards. You know, everyone gets one kind of deal. So if Dalvin Cook ends up winning, say, Offensive Player of the Year. I could see them. I could see that taking votes away from him for comeback player of the year, and instead giving it to someone who didn't win an award, like Jimmy Garoppolo, because for some reason that happens. I I don't fully get it, but it happens. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. So that should bring us to our actual bull predictions, right? Um, well, do you want to do like the standing predictions and the Super Bowl stuff, or do you want to just? Oh, that's right. I didn't. I didn't predict- have that. Um, I didn't write it down. Why All right, then let's just skip it. I had, so, man, for the North, I had the Steelers and the Vikings winning. Uh, Steelers are probably not going to win the AFC North, uh, but the Vikings do have a chance to win the NFC North. Vikings currently um, in second at 7-3 and three behind the Packers at 8-2, and two, so one game back. Thank you. Uh, for the AFC South, I had the Texans, which looks like a pretty good shot, uh, and the Saints, also a pretty good shot to win it. Uh, both yeah. the favorites right now. In the East, I had the Patriots. Duh. Uh, yep. And then uh, who else do I have? I had the Eagles, which is they're they tied are... for first right now. Yeah. That's yeah. a toss up. Uh, AFC West, I had the Chiefs, which are currently one game ahead of the Raiders. A half a game. Half a game, excuse me. And then the uh, Rams, which. Oof. Yikes, they look bad, and that Oof. is a tough division right now. So that's a big L. In yeah, the wild two card. And a half games behind the, the Seahawks for second in the division. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not great right now. Uh, so the AFC wild card, I had the Chiefs and the Browns. I'm sorry, not the Chiefs, the Chargers and the Browns. Uh, the nope. Chargers not are losing records. Yeah. Four and six, three and six. I think the Chargers are the closest of the two, and they have a chance to come back, but I don't think either of these guys will. And then in the NFC, I have the Falcons and the Seahawks. Seahawks, fantastic. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> uh, Falcons, yikes. That's, uh, that's a rough pick. It's a big old oof. <laughs> uh, and then in the championship, AFC championship, I had the Chiefs and the Steelers. Oof. Uh, and then the Vikings Rams also oof, oof. Uh, <laughs> Super Bowl. I had the Vikings over the Steelers. So fat lady oh, isn't singing yet, but goddamn, that's uh, not looking great for me. Whew. Oh, oh man, that was fun. Shall we? Uh, <laughs> shall we go into our actual bull predictions? Yes, let's do it. Uh, do you want to start, or you want me to? Uh, you can start. Go ahead. <laughs> thanks <laughs> all right so hey, i first... just had to predict the steelers in the super bowl you can go first yeah you're right you're right all right my first prediction is that kyler murray fails a losing record as a qb and a below 80 qbr uh, so the first half of that is not exactly bold the cardinals suck and everyone knows it they are currently sitting at three six and one so unless they basically run the table they'll all but finish with a losing record um the second half of that qb rating below 80 thus far not true he does have a 90.2 qb rating so um i could still potentially be right if his season goes to shit but in all likelihood he will uh not fulfill this prophecy yeah, I mean, he still has a chance, like you said, but I, I wouldn't put money on it right now. So we still, uh, does he at least have like uh, half of the criteria for that? And is like, you know what I mean? Have like, the criteria. Can you, can you give yourself like half credit on it before it's, you know, fully definitely not going to happen? Um, I don't know, because his, his stats are pretty good i mean he's got 2500 yards already 2553 he's got 12 touchdowns to five interceptions 7.1 yards per attempt um he's 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 31 sacks is a lot for 218 yards which is a ton i would assume that's second behind daniel jones 
uh, because that's just so many. 17.2% bad throw percents, pretty fucking yikes. Um, so, like, but, I mean, by and large, he's playing like a rookie, but he's playing like a good rookie. Yeah. So, so basically, we'll- the way I, I did this was uh, 10 predictions. So, I did a point system. So, if it's 100% correct, it's a full point. If it's, like, half correct with a good chance of it happening, I gave myself half a point for right now. So... If you want to follow along with your own score sheet for your predictions, feel free. Grade it however you want. I won't. Okay. Uh, all right. I guess I'll do my first one. Yeah, Dalvin, yeah boy. Dalvin Cook leads the NFL in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Uh, no wide receiver depth. Finally healthy. Bradbury fits perfect uh, leading the zone rush were the notes that I had. And as of right now, he is leading the league in rushing yards. Uh, he has 894. Christian McCaffrey has 881. So they're very, very close. You know what's interesting is that I am looking at Pro Football References page, and I have different numbers for their numbers of rushing yards. Interesting. What do you have? I have Dalvin Cook with 991 and Christian McCaffrey with 989. Maybe I just didn't refresh the page. Which uh, which page are you on? You using? I'm on like the uh, the total. But like, what website? I mean, uh, Pro Football Reference. I'm on Pro, Fo- Pro Football Reference too. Maybe I just uh, needed to update everything. How many games played do they have? Uh, I don't know. It's it's on the page where it just has like everything together. Oh, oh. see, I just refreshed the page and now it's updated. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. So Dalvin Cook nine ninety one to nine eighty nine, uh, barely four yards. <laughs> right, it's it's very close, uh, and he's currently second in the NFL uh, with ten rushing touchdowns, one behind Aaron Jones and Christian McCaffrey, who both have eleven, aka so can... third in rushing touchdowns. <laughs> yes, that is how math works. I am stupid. Um, I gave myself half a point because he has exactly half of the criteria for this. And he's in a really good shot to be able to pull away from this at some point. Um, also, there's I would a chance say. that you know he doesn't get it because Christian McCaffrey is a Greek god. Um, but yeah, as of right now, halfway point, I'll give myself half a point on that one. I I very well think you think you should, and with how it's tough because Christian McCaffrey is so fucking good, but he splits so much of his yards amongst his receiving yards that there's a chance right. Dalvin Cook hangs onto this. You know? Oh yeah. All right, my next bold prediction, which when I made it was a very bold prediction, and you were taken aback by it, and now it seems all but inevitable. Um, oh boy, Ram Rams offense does not finish top five. Ooh, yeah, and, <laughs> that seems pretty inevitable. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm scrolling to find them, and uh, let's see, where on earth even are they? I didn't even see them. Ah, uh, they're fifteenth in the league in Russia in uh, in total offensive yards, which is, I believe, the metric we have, we officially settled on for this. Um, that's pretty bad. They're eleventh in points for, which is better, um, but still not great in terms of expected points, which I did read on, and we're going to talk a little bit about later. As for our our small uh, amount of stats, they're twentieth, which means that they're it, basically an overall performance kind of catch all stat. Uh, Mm -hmm. which at 5.45, just awful for reference. Dallas is currently leading the NFL in expected points with 141. The Rams are just shy of six. That's really bad. That is really, really bad. So I think I'll give myself full credit for this one as uh, somehow I'm right about two things today. And that's a lot more than I'm used to. <laughs> so uh, looking at DVOA, which is defense adjusted value over average, which is one of these catch-all statistics that just kind of gives everything in perspective. The Rams are 21st with a negative 5.4%. So they are 5.4% worse than NFL average, which currently is the Arizona Cardinals. Wow, that's bad. Yeah, yeah that's really bad. Okay, okay, let's move on. Sure, let's see. For my number two, 
Miles Garrett falls just short of the NFL sack record, but leads the league with 21 sacks. Um, again, this is one of those uh, where, damn, it is close. Uh, I have to go back and pull this up again because I had to reset everything. He's currently tied for third in the NFL with 10 sacks behind Shaquille Barrett and Chandler Jones, who both have 11 and a half. So he's close there. He's definitely very much in the running. Um, but 10 sacks in nine games, it puts him close. Uh, it puts him close to the 21 that he would need. Shaquille Barrett, uh, especially being a guy that just all of his sacks came in the first three, four games. Um, I could definitely see him slowing down significantly uh, and kind of giving way. Chandler Jones... I think is his his biggest competition to lead the league in sacks. Um, but yeah, Miles Garrett, I I can't give myself any points for this one just because he's not quite there uh, in either category. But um, yeah, this one's close. Okay, all right. Well, at least it's uh, close enough that you can keep your eye on it with a yeah. with a level of hope. Do, 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 all right. Do, 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 do. You okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's I kind of forgot on. that my mic was live, so I just started humming to myself. Yeah, I, I could yeah. tell. Yeah. So my next one is Tom Brady does not play the whole season, which hmm. as of right now is false. <laughs> he has played yeah. every game. But um, just to shit on him because, you know, why not? I am going to read you his QB rating each game. Okay. Week by week. Okay. Week one. 124.9. Very, very All high. Right. Yeah. Week two, 124.7. Still really high. Week three, 103.9. Week four, 45.9. Week five, 106.1. Week six, 88.9. Week seven, 80.7. Week eight, 96.9. Week nine, 80.4. So, it's certainly trending downwards uh, yeah. as the season goes on. It's still good. I mean, his overall QB rating for the season is 93.1. But if he finished the year with that, that would be his lowest mark since 2013. Um, And that would be one of the lower marks of his career. So am I saying that he's going to play himself out of a job? No. But I'm saying he's probably getting fatigued as the season's going on. He is old. Um, this happens to most players in general. And if his body starts, you know, showing signs of age as the season progresses and each game just gets that much more tasking, I would say it's not out of the realm of possibility that an injury ends up ends up catching up to him, which it feels like he's always av- able to avoid. But. Yeah, I, I'll, 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 I'm, I'm so far I'm wrong, but I have a modicum of hope. <laughs> Honestly, I, I wish I could be confident in the idea that Bill Belichick is going to bench Tom Brady at some point. But I don't think he's going to bench him. I'm saying I think I think fatigue might make him more susceptible to an injury. Right. I feel like Tom Brady's the kind of guy though that I don't know. I I really hope it happens. I just I don't know if this is the year. Uh, so I I, 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 re- I refuse to let myself fall victim to underestimating Tom Brady again because I can't do it year after year. So speaking to Tom Brady's durability, just real quick, I'm looking at his Pro Football Reference page. How many seasons in his career do you think he played fewer than the full 16 games? Um. Are we going to count seasons where he just like didn't play week 17? He only had one game where he... Yeah, in general. Uh, five? Six? Let's see. Uh, we're not going to count the year 2000 where he played in one game and started right, zero. Yeah. So taking that off the board. 2001, that's the his first year. It's the year he came in for Drew Bledsoe. He played in 15, only started 14. So that's one. Then he played every single game until 2008, the year that he um, had the uh, ACL. Yeah, the ACL injury, where he played one single game. So that's two seasons. Then he played every single game until 2016, where he played, where he missed four games due to suspension. 
<laughs> and then he's played every single game since. So three Yikes. seasons. And yeah, that's, one of uh... them, and sorry, uh, only, only one of them was from injury. The first two was one, his basically his rookie year, and yeah, the other one was a suspension. He's missed out of out of a a, a how many years is this career? 18 year career. 45. He's missed 15 cumulative games and they all came in one season. Yeah, that's not great. That's ridiculous. Man, that dude was like, I'm going to ruin the NFL's whole fucking career. And he Damn. did. He's yeah. ruined the NFL for everyone else. Where'd he go, Tom? Fucking Tom. Yeah. Fucking dick. Give me your next <laughs> prediction there, big guy. Uh, the Steelers' defense is top five by DVOA, and you gave me so much shit for this. And guess where they are? Number three. Hallelujah. Okay. Steelers' defense is back. Uh, they're comfortably behind uh, New England and San Francisco right now, whose defenses have just been just wildly consistent all year. Um, but since the Steelers added Minka Fitzpatrick, they have been shooting up these rankings. Uh, their defensive DVOA is currently negative 12.4%, uh, 4.1 over the next highest, which are the LA Rams and Chicago Bears. Meanwhile, New England is at negative 33.7, and San Francisco is negative 32.2. So they are lapping the rest of the league when it comes to defensive DVOA. Yeah, well, they're really fucking good. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Mm. So, yeah, solid full point for Corwin on number three. Well, I'm going to get zero on my number four as it's Patriots miss the playoffs. Oof. And, uh, yeah, they are eight and one, I, I believe. They're, they're, uh, they're making the playoffs. Yeah. It's a, they're the number one it's seed in the gone. AFC. They're, they're making the playoffs. This might have been your boldest prediction yet. Well, if I recall correctly, it went hand in hand with prediction number three that Tom Brady right. doesn't play the whole season. And if uh, he missed a lot of time, I would, you know, argue that there's a good shot of them missing the playoffs. But here we are. And at this point, even if like they, you know, he did get hurt and missed the remaining seven games and the Patriots went three and four, they'd still finish 11 and five. They probably. They might not be the number one seed because of like the Ravens being weirdly good or something, but they'd definitely still make the fucking playoffs. So, yeah, uh, zero, zero credit on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm up next. Yep. Uh, Devin Bush leads the league in tackles. Spoiler alert, Devin Bush does not lead the league in tackles. He is currently 28th uh, with 44 Blake Martinez is currently leading the league with 63. Holy shit, Buda Baker, a fucking free safety in Arizona, has 60 tackles. That's a lot. I mean, safeties having a lot of tackles isn't crazy. Guys like Sean Williams, who plays for the awful Cincinnati defense, has 54. Uh, Landon Collins has 52. You know, good safeties are up there, but I just never would have thought Buda Baker would be second in the league with tackles. How Actually, I'm sorry. Tackles? This is solo tackles. I should be uh, doing combined tackles. Buda Baker is still fourth in combined tackles, though, with 86. Right. Which is crazy. Blake Martinez is still first with 102, but that actually jumps Devin Bush up to 23 with 69 total tackles. So there it is. Nice. Uh, yeah, definitely not going to win this one, but it's cool to see Devin Bush up there uh, as a rookie. Well, my predictions are slowly getting worse as we get to uh, the next one, which is Antonio Brown leads all wide receivers in yards. <laughs> Where is he on the list, Josh? <laughs> uh, well, he's certainly not last because he did play one game, but he's <laughs> dangerously close to it. So let's just move on. There's zero point in discussing I, this. I, We've no, talked I, about I, it. I really, I really want to look into how many passing yards he has and where he ranks in the league. Did I say passing yards? I meant receiving yards. Um, where can I find this? God, this is just... I'll, I'll look it up. I got very it. Very convoluted. All right. Uh, uh, you just give your next prediction while I find it. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Giants bench Eli for Daniel Jones after week six, only to bench Daniel Jones for Eli later in the season. 
uh basically the giants played the vikings uh and the patriots week five and six so i figured eli would have gotten quite roughed up against those two top defenses and they were like all right now that the hard part's out of the way let's give it off to daniel jones um yeah that happened a lot sooner than i thought uh Eli Manning started the first two games of the season. And then uh, September 17th, week three, uh, they announced that uh, Manning would be uh, benched for Daniel Jones. Um, I mean, we talked about Daniel Jones earlier. He hasn't been fantastic. He hasn't been terrible as of right now. I mean, their next couple games are against the Jets, against Chicago. I'm sorry, against Chicago, against Green Bay. I don't see him getting benched anytime soon for Eli Manning. Um, He's been very healthy so far, so I don't think it'll happen because of injuries. So no points for this one. Um, I can see you giving yourself half credit, but I understand. All right. My real quick, Antonio Brown currently ranks amongst wide receivers 269th in receiving yards. That is lower than I thought he was going to be. I'll be uh, honest. Frank Gore is 274th. <laughs> so still above Frank Gore. Um, so he has 56 Damn. receiving yards on the season. The current leader in the NFL is Michael Thomas with 1,027. So he would need, you know, 960 more yards to pass. Michael Thomas provided Michael Thomas magically stops playing football. So Without he's any uh, other receiver in the NFL receiving any yards yeah i have a feeling that won't happen it won't it won't uh for my next actual prediction which oh man there's a chance but not a good one uh eight plus head coaches get fired before the season ends um one's already been been dismissed right yeah jay gruden already got fired yes that's but that's been it so far um although it happened so early in the season i was like "Ooh, there's hope uh and then no one else got canned so. I have news on this exact prediction that occurred in the past 15 minutes. Oh, really? What, what, tell uh, me. New York Jets owner Christopher Johnson oh, yeah, I saw told this. reporters that Adam Gase will not be fired now or after the season. Yeah, he said no intentions to uh, change head coaching prior to the 2020 season. I was really, really hoping you didn't hear that so I could get your hopes up about Adam Gase being fired and then crush them. But... I'm sadly didn't happen. I'm I I I don't know what to say. I I'm tired. All right, give me the next one. Uh, Jameis Winston leads the NFC in touchdowns and interceptions. Uh, let's see, where did I have these numbers? Uh, here we go. Um, let's see. I had to look these up again because I had to refresh. He is. Currently tied for seventh in the NFL with 17 touchdowns. Currently, Russell Wilson is leading the NFC with 23, so six behind. Not exactly out of striking range, but with the way Russell Wilson has been playing, not exactly too close. Uh, So that's, you know, we'll see how that happens. But he is leading the entire NFL with passes intercepted. With 14, Baker Mayfield is next closest with 12. So a solid half point there. He's also leading the league in time sacked, which is hilarious. How many? 34. That's a lot. That is a lot. So half a point here. Wow, he also leads in pick sixes too with three. Ooh. He's having himself a very Jameis Winston type year. Yeah, that sounds about right. Where is he uh, uh, in fumbles? Does he have a lot of fumbles? He can't Daniel, have more than Daniel Jones. Yeah, no, Daniel Jones definitely has a lot. He is t- fourth with 10. So, so many. He, he's so bad. Uh, so, yeah, a uh, solid half a point here for leading in interceptions. My next one was Brian Hoyer takes the Colts to the playoffs. Um, Brian Hoyer has appeared in two games for the Colts. Uh, he has thrown a cumulative 65 passes all season. Uh, he's not, un- unless Jacoby Brissett gets hurt. Well, he's currently it's... out with injury right now. So, Oh, he is. That's right. Maybe there's hope. Maybe <laughs> there's a say, small. 
modicum this, of hope. This could have been a wild prediction to start the season, and I don't know how you even came up with this, but it's one that actually has a runway or uh, has a path ahead of it to be true. Yeah, uh, the Colts right now are tied. Um, they're in a three-way tie record-wise with the Steelers and the Raiders for the second wild card spot, though the Steelers, Steelers are in the playoffs record. because they have the conference win percent and the Raiders are ahead of the Colts due to head-to-head records. Um, so, but rec- but just straight up win-loss-wise, the, the Colts are right there. So, you know, maybe there is hope. We'll see. We will see. Um, he is questionable to return this Sunday, so we'll see what happens. All right, give me your next one. Chris Godwin and Tyler Lockett finish the season as wide receiver ones in fantasy. This one I am so happy with because I have both of them. Chris Godwin is the number four overall wide receiver. Tyler Lockett is the number six overall wide receiver. So both solidly wide receiver ones, both having fantastic seasons. Um, Tyler Lockett, did have an injury this past week, but uh, test results came back negative. He should be good to go without missing any time. So full point for Corwin for this prediction. My next prediction is the Detroit Lions win the NFC North. They are currently dead last yes. at 3-5-1. and one. Yeah, not, not ideal. Which means if they, they won out... <laughs> If they won out, they'd be 10, 5, and 1. And the uh, Packers are two wins away from being from, from 10 wins already. So it, it, this, was, uh, this, one's, this one's not going to happen. No, I don't think it will. All right, give me your next one. Uh, Evan Ingram leads the Giants in receiving yards and touchdowns. Uh, currently, he is leading the Giants in receiving yards with 467 but is tied for second with three touchdowns to Darius Slayton's five. Um, As of right now, it's half true, uh, but he has missed uh, two games so far with injury. I could easily see him taking back the touchdown crown once he comes back healthy. Darius Slayton is not a guy I'm scared of when it comes to red zone targets. Um, So I think this has a very, very good chance of uh, succeeding at the end of the season. Um, but yeah, half a point as of right now. Right on. Right on. Uh, my next one is the Jacksonville defense. Can't put it together. Nick Foles carries them to six wins. So let's address the second half of this first. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars currently have four wins. They are four and five. Um, their strength of schedule remaining is I don't actually know negative point one is that high is that low I think that's I low no idea. yeah I think that means they have a relatively easy schedule regardless six wins is not outrageous for them they'll probably get there within the next few weeks since they only need two more wins their defense uh not being good. Let's see where the Jacksonville Jaguars defense ranks by total yards allowed. And they are currently 19th. Um I guess actually let's flip it upside down. They're 14th in terms of uh, fewest yards allowed, which uh is mediocre since it's middle of the yeah. pack. So, I don't know if I want to give myself credit for saying they can't put it together. Um I, I'll give myself credit it, uh, I'll give myself half credit for this. Their defense couldn't put it together. They actually traded away Jalen mm-hmm. Ramsey, which means they couldn't put it together on the field or off the field. Um, but they'll probably get the six wins, and part of that's going to be uh, the help of Gardner Minshew. We'll see how Nick Foles looks when he actually returns. But this is a this is a definitely better than my last like five picks, but. <laughs> Still not great. So Nick Foles is going to come back week 11 at Indianapolis. Uh, Their schedule remaining at Indianapolis, at Tennessee, Tampa Bay, the Chargers, at the Oakland Raiders, at Atlanta, and then home against the Colts. That's not a terribly difficult schedule. Um, 
it'll be interesting to see if Nick Foles can get six wins out of those seven games. I don't think he will, but... Well, he only needs two for the Jacksonville Jaguars to have six wins. But didn't... uh, Wasn't part of it him leading them to six wins? Oh, I see what you're saying here. Um, Yeah, we can interpret it that way. We could do it however we like at the end of the season. It doesn't really matter, but he's got seven games left to get himself six wins, if that's how we look at it. That's going to be tough, but Jacksonville themselves getting to six wins, probably pretty likely. Fair. Very fair. Uh, Josh Rosen starts the season as a backup, yet leads the league in sacks. Uh, He did start this season as a backup, and then he wasn't a backup anymore, and then now he's a backup again. I haven't been able to follow that completely because it's wildly confusing, uh, but it looks like he is not going to lead the league in sacks. He currently has 16 in his three starts. Uh, Jameis Winston, like we said, had a lot more than that. So, uh, yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna happen. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think any of us could have predicted what the fuck was going to happen with the Dolphins quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Fitting enough, my next prediction also about the Dolphins, uh, that they would release new uniforms to distract during a terrible season. This has not happened yet, although there's still hope. What team was this? The Dolphins. Uh, didn't they actually release like new alternate uniforms? Did they? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't see anything, but that doesn't mean you're not right. I think they did. Um, the Padres announced new uniforms. Yeah, they they have uh, new white throwback uniforms in 2019. Wait, really? Yeah. Yo, and I got this one right. Uh, actually, when did we make these predictions? Before the season. Uh, this was announced in May, so I don't know if we can give that to you. Wait, they did? Yeah, May 18th, Dolphins will wear white throwback uniforms in 2019. It's not like uh, they're new uniforms altogether. It's just like a one-two game type deal. Uh, Do I get credit for not knowing about it and still predicting it? Uh, I feel like with what's a gray area here discussion. Yeah, it's it's uh, ignorance is not a defense against crime i didn't commit uh, a crime no but you know i don't know we'll we'll toss this one up we'll figure this out later all right fair enough. i don't, I don't really care too much one way or the other so all right do you have any um any predictions left because i'm tapped out i have one all right late I, on me i fucking killed it with this one uh antonio brown plays up to his contract and balls out Oh, so we both had that. <laughs> um, well, here's the thing. Uh, Antonio Brown had his contract voided. He didn't get any money from it. And, you know, he he took the ball out of, out of the stadium when he left. So, um, you know, depending on how you look at it, you could no, say. You lose. Yeah, all right. No, get, no. Out of here. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> so I finished with three and a half out of ten points. Uh, I had five when I put these productions predictions together uh, before this week. So this week kind of fucked me up real good. Um, but we'll see what happens for the rest of the season. There's a couple that could still go my way. So yeah, yeah, you know, it's not not, not all hope is lost yet. A lot of half credit in here. A lot of yeah, half credit. yeah. Just like all those math tests in high school. Oh, God. Hey, I still get partial credit in college. Hell Thank yeah, buddy. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so, so, time to talk about the Astros? Yes. Oh, my God. What a fucking month for Houston, man. Uh, so, so for so anyone really unaware, the Astros have been rather credibly accused by at least Mike Fires, but I believe several other people. Mike Fires is a pitcher who pitched for the Astros in 2017 mm-hmm. of them stealing signs with, by using cameras and um, uh, I believe video. So basically what they were doing is they had a camera out in center field that would record what sign the catcher was laying down. That would then be transmitted in some fashion to the Astros dugout. 
and then the players would either issue a loud banging sound to let the batter know what sign was just laid down, i.e. what pitch to expect, or a whistle of some kind. And, you know, it'd be, it'd be no bangs for a fastball. I think it was like one bang for a slider and two bangs for a changeup, something like that. And then the, I forget mm-hmm. what the whistling was. But regardless, they had, they had a whole system in place. And then people started digging through the video of the Astros doing this. And, I mean, once you point it out, it's fucking obvious. Yeah. Like the John Boy video that he put out, especially on this topic. Yeah. Wow. Like that was pretty 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 clear that they were very much using outside technology to steal signs yeah i'll try to dig up the john boy video off of twitter or youtube and put it in the show notes for this so if you want to check it out you can uh he does a really good job of breaking it down it's oh my god i all right so let's talk about sign stealing first and then we can get into the actual astros part of it sure so what do you think of this specific way of doing it uh it's bad i i really just there are some guys on twitter like jeremy franks who were you know they support using technology to steal signs you know if it's legalized but as of right now the way it is it is illegal and it it shouldn't be included or like it shouldn't be allowed and it should be a huge thing altogether i just i am not about it i mean i don't think it's a part of baseball i don't think it should be a part of baseball if you're stealing signs when you got a guy on second base that's some good gamesmanship right there all about it but if you're fucking you know if all of a sudden every mlb stadium has cameras in the outfield looking at what the catcher's doing i mean come on how is how is that improving the game it's just it's it's just bullshit all around yeah i don't get Jeremy Frank's been on a weird defense of the Astros, and I really don't get it. Um, Because it's such a different thing, stealing signs, if you're a player standing on second base, than there is using electronic means. Because, I mean, if you're forced to tell the... You're basically saying you're you're forcing the pitcher to tell the batter what they're about to throw. Mm -hmm. And that's insane. That's insane. How on earth can you expect a pitcher to succeed in that environment? Like, that's ridiculous. At that point, you might as well abandon signs and just have the pitcher and catcher start yelling at each other what they're going to throw. Oh, absolutely. Because then then the, the whole idea of ma- laying down signs just becomes theater. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's not a play. It, that's that's such an example of, and I'm going to shit talk Jeremy Frank for a second here, even though I follow him on Twitter and I love him, mm-hmm. of a, of a really work. dumb stats kid thinking that this game is played on paper. I mean, it's not a just about execution. He has no concept of the gamesmanship involved between sequencing pitches, working counts, and getting into a batter's head. It's fucking stupid. And he's a goddamn idiot for thinking that it's going to be okay, even if it was legalized. It's ridiculous. Because the thing is, if you're trying to steal uh, signs from second base, what the what the players, what the catcher will do is he'll start you know, laying down multiple sets of signs, and then they'll have, there'll be one hot sign. So he'll lay down like four signs, but only the third one matters, right? That's the pitch that's going to be thrown. And that's to make it more challenging on the runner. That's part of the gamesmanship of the stealing signs end of it. It's you have to try to figure out what we're doing. You have an avenue to do it, but it's not going to be easy. But if you introduce the electric means to it, it, it's it's it comes down to basic code breaking. It's it's not going to be challenging in the slightest. Yeah, at that point, you can have computers running uh, systems to see which signs are being laid down, which sequence was chosen for, which number in the sequence was chosen to be the the hot sign, and then just extrapolate that information out to give it to the dugout. Like it all happens in an instant. The, the, it, it's it ruins the game. It absolutely ru- like. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the game if the batter had to declare to the pitcher wh- when he was going to swing the ball, swing it, swing the bat? No, of course not. That's what this is. That's what this is. It's fucking idiotic. And I, oh, it, it drives me insane. The amount of, uh, well, you know, that's the game kind of shit I'm seeing on, on Twitter because it's not, it really, it's such a huge colossal difference between doing it as a runner on second and doing it via cameras and computers in the outfield. Like the Astros did it. I agree with you a hundred percent. 
It's just such a low life move. I just I don't know how the Astros think they're going to be able to defend themselves. And so that brings me to the Astros part of this. Uh, so yeah, they just went through this whole thing with domestic violence, and they clearly showed that they don't care about anything other than results. You know, like we said with the Roberto Osuna trade, like if you're willing to be cold blooded about it, then uh, yeah, you know, he makes your team better. And I guess that's actually just their mentality with everything. Like, yeah, you know, cheating is wrong, but if it helps us win the World Series, like, you know, we kind of have to. And it's like, no, you don't. And this isn't the only thing they've been accused of in terms of cheating, because two years ago or last year, Trevor Bauer also accused them of using pine tar like heavily because of all of their increases in spin rate. Like they they had a lot of issues over the last three years with this current regime uh, of, you know, Jeff Lunau and AJ Hinch like there. This is going to be this is bad. This is really bad. Did you see Trevor Bauer's tweet? I did. <laughs> I fucking love him. He's yeah, so was, fucking funny. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great. That was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, yeah. It's what do you think the MLB does here? So th- th- that's the million dollar question. Obviously, they're going to do a quote unquote investigation first um and then there'll have to be consequences and my thing is if this was the orioles you know with how bad they are draft picks get lost fines get issued their international signing money gets taken away you know what happened with the braves when they were um signing underage international prospects which is still right awful uh but you know like the braves weren't great when they did that the orioles how- aren't great now the Astros just won the World too, though. How would you compare, like, before you go into the Astros, how would you compare signing underage prospects to stealing uh, calls? Uh, morally, signing underage prospects is significantly worse. Mm-hmm. In terms of affecting on the field stuff, stealing signs is worse. And MLB has clearly made it, or has made it very clear that they care far more about on the field stuff than they do morals. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so in that instance, the, I think the punishment will be more harsh than this for this. But anyway, so since the Astros just won the World Series in 2017 and they were just in the World Series this past year, lost it in seven games. I this has to be bans. I think this has to be lifetime bans. And that sounds so reactionary. But how is this all that different from what the Black Sox did? The 1919 Black Sox scandal like. They they threw their game, but it's it's in in concept it's the same ideas. They cheated. They're yeah. cheating, and they cheated at such a high level. And what's weird is they cheated when they didn't need to cheat. This team's amazing. They didn't have to do this. It it that's why it's so it's so terrible. Do you think the MLB is going to go back and just review? I'm not going to say 162 games, but select games from the regular season and the majority of the postseason just to see the extent of all this and then base it off of essentially post season usage uh postseason for sure like for sure because you know there's only so many games in the po- and it's only home games that this is affecting obviously right. they can't set all this shit up in away parks uh so that limits it a lot for postseason which will make it a lot easier for them to review um, but in terms of regular season, they'll, they'll probably cherry pick a few games. Cause when you have a large data set like this and you're wondering if it's consistent, you don't need to check all of it. You can just kind of pick at random. And if it holds true throughout your randomized search process, then it probably holds true throughout the rest of the data set. The whole um, concept of sampling. Exactly. So they'll probably take a statistically significant sample amongst home games over the course of the past three years and just double check to, to see. Uh, there might also be a quality of opponent level can, uh, in this. I Granted, I saw videos of them doing it against the Mets and the White Sox, which feels like two weird yeah. fucking teams for this. I would have said, why don't you pick teams, uh, pick games against like the Red Sox and the Yankees and the A's? But no, <laughs> they did this against the White Sox and the Honestly, Mets. Honestly, I think they did that to cover their tracks. Oh, if yeah. it's random occurrence is occurring against the White Sox and the Mets, well... They wouldn't cheat against the White Sox and the Mets because they have no need to. All right, maybe it's not this other, you know, thing that we assume that it is. So, 
maybe that's part of it. Maybe they're just really fucking bad at cheating. Who knows? Uh, yeah, but that's the thing that drives me crazy is how obvious it is once it got pointed out. It's one of those things you wouldn't think twice about because you know you hear you hear whistling at baseball games all the time, right? And you hear banging. I mean, like at, first off, you hear banging at every single A's and Indians game due to the drums. And then, like, you know, every Yankees game with Brett Gardner just yeah, Brett, beating the shit out of the dugout. Very much so. And, like, anytime a game gets exciting, play you know, fans will bang against the seats because they're standing up. Like, it happens a lot. Like, you wouldn't think about it until it gets pointed out. And then you go, oh, my God, wow. And it's loud enough that you can hear it in the broadcast. That's tough. Which is, yeah, that is something right there. Um, so... I think the minimum punishment is going to have to be a loss of draft picks, a loss of international signing money, and then at least one year bans for uh, Jeff Lunau and AJ Hinch. And at worst, it'll be all of those things plus lifetime bans for those players. Right. And some affecting of the record books in regards to, these Astros teams and the awards that they've won, like the World Series, like Jose Altuve's MVP, like a mm-hmm. potential MVP for Bregman this year. Like, so this did could the be heavy. Dodgers just win the World Series? I, no, because they, they, they can't take it back, same way they can't take back the fact that the White Sox <laughs> uh, like lost the World Series, even though they probably could have and should have won it. But <laughs> let me rephrase. Do Dodgers fans think they just won a World Series? Oh, yeah. Oh, every <laughs> Dodgers fan and Yankees fan feels so vindicated in their losses now. Oh, I love it. I fucking love it. It's just it's just incredible to me. Because on the look, man, I get on some level trying to squeeze every competitive advantage you possibly can because it's sports it's tough it's cutthroat wins at the end of the day are what is most important but like and I, this, i'll repeat the same thing i said last time we talked about the astros and shitty stuff don't you want to go to sleep tonight feeling okay about yourself don't you want to feel like you're a good person and speaking to aj hinch don't you want to be less of a fucking dick i mean <laughs> he was given aaron yeah, Boone so much shit for being like <laughs> We're not stealing signs. If we knew this was going to cause so much controversy, we would have practiced this shit in spring training. Suck mm-hmm. a dick, dude. You've been practicing for three years and you knew it. <laughs> You're an asshole. Uh, you could have should have kept your mouth shut. Dumbass. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. I guess, uh, I guess as a Pirates fan, I guess I could claim part of a championship here because, you know, I'm sure the Astros cheated against like the one game they played us that year so yeah uh you know dodgers fans you could claim it for yourselves as a pirates fan i will claim it for myself uh and then aj Hinch should never be in baseball again imagine the controversy of aj Hinch also won this year oh god i didn't which even he, think about that which he didn't that, like, that, that, that award already got um and we'll talk about all the MLB awards next week after they're all finished get being given out as they obviously have not been finished giving out yet. So we're not going to talk about them, but imagine the controversy if AJ Hinch won manager of the year this year. Damn. AJ Oof. Hinch did not win it in 2017. That is absurd. No, it went to the guy from the twins, right? Yeah. Paul Paul, yep. Yeah. And the yeah. twins won it again this year. After yeah. How Paul I, th- I think, yeah, because it's funny because Paul Molitor won the award and then got fired and it's like, yep. Oh, Okay. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just can't. It it sucks. It really sucks when this kind of shit comes out. You know. AJ Hinch uh, finished third that year in uh, manager of the year voting with one first second? place vote. Terry Francona of the Indians. That's what it was. Yeah, because that was the twenty two game win streak. Yeah, and then Girardi finished fourth. Yeah, yeah, because they weren't expecting to make the playoffs that year, and then snuck in via the wild card do you want to talk about manager hirings now or do you want to wait until we do like the awards stuff yeah well, let's wait for later yeah, uh, i know the capital just got announced but yeah we can hang on to it okay. um it's i i seriously wonder though do you think do you think the mlb will look at what just happened with the uh brandon tobman situation in assessing how to uh how to punish the astros for this 
I hope so. I think it should, because right? At, at that point, or at this point, it is essentially a it's a cultural issue with what's going on in Houston. Um, now that I think about it, Astro Ball 2 is going to be a tremendous fucking book, and I can't wait to read it. Um, but man, like it's it's a top down issue for for Houston, and uh, I think the MLBs should and will have to get involved heavily with what's going on there to a uh, one give out fair decisions for punishment and also really just prevent this kind of shit from happening again. Yeah, I I I I I think they should they should take it in accordance with what happened with that as well. It because you're right, it's it it becomes a whole cultural thing and do you really want a guy who's going to allow the level of misogyny that he already has and also be the same guy who's going to be cheating at like they've shown no no moral compass they've shown Mm -hmm. no worthwhile no self-affirming traits that they should they they deserve to be in the mlb i mean this is bad this is really owners owners have i've gotten forced to sell teams for less than this i don't see that being out of the realm of possibilities i could easily see that happening you know, with how bad things have gotten there, maybe a change of ownership would be a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough for me to put this on the owner yet, but at the same time, this is a lot of shit just over the course of two years that is, oh man, it just it's just so bad. So does this turn into an investigation that bleeds into next season? I I think whatever they do, it has to happen before next season because you have to like the Astros are going to have to know what their manager situation is and make hires. Same thing with their GM situation. The draft stuff won't hit them until the summer. So you can like, it's not super, super pressing, right? but I mean, MLB is going to have to be swift on this, especially because GM meetings start next week. I think very I think true. I didn't think about that. I, I think, let me double check. Cause I have the dates up over here. But I'm pretty sure winter meetings start in like, like next Monday. So, sorry, December no. December ninth. My bad. Next month, December 9th. So I would definitely assume that they would they would they would want to ideally have it done by then, because oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, well, for obvious reasons, I don't have to explain. So, I, I, I have my fingers crossed that they do the right thing. Uh, I have my fingers crossed, but I wouldn't necessarily say that my hopes are extremely high. Oh, yeah, mine aren't either, but, you know, fingers crossed. Mm-hmm. It's just upsetting. I agree. I agree. Hopefully it gets worked out soon, and it's not something that turns into a major, major issue with uh, fans being upset, because that is the last thing I want right now is to have this turn into a fucking deflate gate scandal. You know what I don't get about the whole fan thing though, is like, why defend it? Why defend it? Like Mm -hmm. I love the Yankees. They're my favorite sports team, let alone baseball team. And if it came out that Brian Cashman was, uh, I'll say uncouth to be gentle to female reporters in the locker room. And then um, less than a month later, or a member of his staff anyway, then less than a month later also came out that he was condoning very, very severe levels of cheating. Even despite the fact that Brian Cashman has been with the Yankees for 20 years, 25 years, if you include his pre GM roles, I'd want him gone too. I mean, I love the Yankees, but I'm not going to forgive them for anything. They don't, I don't owe them shit. You know, like where's your moral compass as a fan? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's the frustrating part about sports, you know. I agree. There's really no perfect way for things to go, and everyone's going to have very different opinions, and not everyone's going to be happy. And 
it's not always going to be something where the league makes the right decision for one reason or another and we get left with a bunch of shit in our hands poop right in the fingers <laughs> you know how we like it oh down and dirty susio <laughs> boys all right you ready to get out of here i am ready I did have one more thing, but we've been so packed with topics recently that we didn't get to. But it doesn't really matter. It was uh, it was light anyway. So we can save it for another day. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at JuicingPod. If you want to hit us up via email, you can do so at JuicingTheNumbers at gmail.com. And if you want to find show notes for this episode and all previous episodes, you can do so at JuicingTheNumbers.Wixsite.com slash website or JuicingTheNumbers.com. And until Monday... Y'all have a good one. Bye.